Hey YouTube, it is Easy Prepper 101, and today we're going to be doing some tests to see what can the Harbor Freight battery with the inverter charge for us and use if you had to use this in a grid down situation. Some of the tests we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the USBs there to uh, charge your tablet just to see. Also, we're going to be using a compound miter saw, a circular saw. Also going to be seeing if we can open and close the garage door a few times and a few other items that we're going to try to do too. Also, if we zoom in here, kind of focus us here. Um, we're getting a high voltage there. So we're definitely, um, I think this battery is very good to go, but what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to now head inside to the garage and we're going to do the first test, which is going to be the garage door. Uh, one more thing before we do that, just to kind of show you what we're going to do to disconnect this here is uh, we're going to take the negative off first and the positive. So now those are officially done. Now we are going to take the cable for the solar. Let me just make sure that's in the shot. We're going to unplug this and then we're going to pull this out. because we're not going to be taking that with us. And then we're going to be very careful that when I'm carrying this into the, uh, into the garage, I'm not going to show that, but that these aren't going to be touching those so it doesn't uh, have any sparks or anything like that. But just to make sure, we're also going to just going to unplug, unplug, sorry, unplug the solar charge regulator. So next, uh, we're going to head to the garage. All right, guys, we are in the garage right now. And right now I have an extension cord that's pretty much running there just this to the top so that's plugged in so this is we are officially using the battery um, as you can see everything is officially plugged in ready to go you can see the power light is on and one of the biggest things we're going to be testing is to see would this open your garage in a grid down situation so that's going to be the first test so now with the battery with the inverter here we go As you can see, that worked very well in a grid down situation. So if you wanted to get into your garage, you were in the house, you wanted to open it up, this battery will definitely do the trick. Now we're gonna close it. So it's definitely working. So it will definitely, um, your battery, uh, your Harbor Freight solar battery will open and close your garage door now. Um, from me using this, you know, opening and closing this garage door, you know, every day, I can tell that there's a little bit of a difference in power. That's because you're literally using an inverter here charged with the battery. So now what we're going to do is we are just going to, I'm going to put this on time lapse. I'm going to do it a few more times for you. And then we're going to come back, just kind of talk about some pros and, you know, and maybe any cons that we might have. So uh, enjoy the demo. All right, we did a total of four times just to kind of show you like if you were leave to go to work in the morning and then if you came home on your lunch, if you worked close by and then if you went back out and you came back in, um, as you can definitely see, this will definitely do the trick of opening and closing using the Harbor Freight battery with the inverter. Now, the one thing, please do keep in mind that when you're using this right now, that we are not hooked up to the solar panels as you can see right there, the little dis LED, the, the screen there, Sorry for moving that here because I'm using the tripod. That is off. So right now I um, have you know no power going to that for charging it. But as you can see, that worked fine like in a grid down situation or if you maybe wanted to have your garage door on a separate um, you know switch so it's not to the house. So if you did lose power, you could use this now, like I said before, this would be hooked up to your solar kit. So after you use this and close this, as long as it's a sunny day or even a cloudy day, those panels will be able to charge this battery so you'll be able to use this. But I definitely think, you know, in a grid down situation, that this is something that I've been kind of looking into and kind of playing with and kind of seeing would this work and would this not work. And for me, it definitely would. What I would definitely do is I would definitely clean it up to where I'm not having an extension cable running up to the outlet. I would actually kind of do it more professional. Um, I have a friend who's an electrician, have him kind of really help me out to really try to figure out what would be the best way to do this. 
But now what we're gonna do is we are now gonna go into um, charging an iPad. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be charging an iPad here. And as I adjust the camera, I'm gonna kind of pick the screen up. As you see, I just this is just a straight iPad mini uh, with a long with a long cable there. Um, there should be no problem charging this, but just to kind of show you everything that we're doing now, this is the same, you know, everything that we're doing all these tests is the same day on the battery that's gotten a full set of, that this battery's got a full charge. The last time I used this battery was the day before actually watering my garden. And actually, yes, we are October 7th, actually in the battery, uh, the garden is still producing cucumbers and tomatoes right now. And actually some of our eggplants popped up some flowers, which is a little surprising. But what we're gonna do right now is just take the cable. This will charge this pretty much no problem, just like you would have found. And we'll get this in the screen. And you can see the charge will unplug. Kind of a no brainer, but if I'm gonna, you know, I wanna do this test for you guys, I kinda want you guys to see that this can do everything on this charge and everything else. So. Um, right next to where next we're going to set up is my uh, compound miter saw. That's going to be a big test. So if like you were in a grid down situation, if you need to like make some cuts with a two by fours or anything else that you might need to use, that is going to be um, the next test here to see um, if this can be done, which I think it should be. If it could do the garage floor, it should definitely do that. But uh, here we go. All right. So we have our compound miter saw that is connect it to our inverter to the battery in there so just to kind of show you that this will kind of work i'm gonna do a quick cut just to show you test because what that just told me was we killed the battery we pretty much drained the battery so that just shows you that the compound miter saw is too much to use in a grid down situation so the one thing that i ended up doing was just doing a quick check too was it does work after you uh power cycle the inverter so you're just pretty much what you would do is come to here turn it on back on and when i did that but it doesn't have the power. So really in a grid down situation, you would not be using a compound miter saw. So note, so I mean, it'll definitely work to finish the cut. So it finished the cut, but you, it, but it doesn't have the power that it really needs if you're plugging it into just a regular power outlet. So good to know it can still get the job done, but in the end, not uh, the kind of route you would want to go. But now we're going to test the circular saw. So right now we have our circular saw, which is, this is an older one that actually was my grandpa's for probably the mid to late eighties, maybe early nineties, but it's a black and decker and I'm just pretty much plugged just straight into that. And um, so we're just gonna do a test. So this will probably definitely cut probably like two by four, probably very thin plywood stuff. And it's probably gonna be one of those things where you're probably gonna have to cut slow, kind of like what we had to do with the compound miter saw. But in the end, it's one of those things where you maybe not want to use for, you know, in a grit down situation. But I think if you really had to, um, you're probably going to be best to do that way. But because it just doesn't have the power like you would if you plugged in. So, you know, and this is the difference from this is into the inverter. So you can hear it's definitely a little bit weak, but it still, it still works. But now we're going to plug into the power strip on the side. So you can definitely hear it. There is a difference from going straight into that outlet on the, I have a little power strip on the side versus going into the inverter. So you can definitely tell from the, you know, a normal 
versus this. Button. So maybe instead of using your circular saw, plugging it this uh, into the inverter, you may want to go with this route, which is, this is a uh, Makita. It's the 18 volt lithium. Um, the battery that I have here, sorry. Then you might be able to use this battery to use your power tools like your drill, your impact drill, um, circular saw and flashlight. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to test the battery of just showing the charge i pretty much have i'm feeling good that it will definitely charge this battery this battery is full by the way but i kind of used it a little bit but we'll definitely show it charging so uh we're going to get to that one now okay as you can see i have a makita battery charger here just to kind of do a, one more test just to kind of prove through everything here's the battery As you can hear it's running as you can see it's already charging green but that's because of you know this battery is fully charged so i'm not too concerned about that but if you wanted to use this harbor freight battery with the inverter that you can buy that is going to be a good thing now the one thing that this is the first time this is done was if you heard that fan talk the fan went off on the inverter while this was charging so like I said in the last segment using the circular saw that you that the corded one versus this one will probably be better because you'll be able to charge this and it will you'll still get the wattage that you're going to need as you heard the difference in the pitches so you know it's a good thing to go over everything so what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of pause everything kind of get everything wrapped up talk about some pros and cons and what do we think all right guys just to kind of go a quick overview of how everything worked out i'm gonna pan up to the ceiling so the garage door definitely had no issues using the inverter for opening and closing the garage and we like i said i did a total of uh, four times which is about what you would do for you know open the garage door throughout the day and like i said in the video in case you missed it um with that being plugged in it would charge during the daytime if you had sunlight so get back to over here so then just to kind of do an overview you know this is a um this one right here this is the compound miter saw by delta um definitely it would cut like a two by four or probably like a deck board but you got to be careful because it's not pulling the same wattage or ampage when you're pulling in from the inverter. You heard the difference when I was using the circular saw plugged into this versus when this was plugged into the side power strip. So it's going to pull more amps from the regular uh, power because that's what it's going to do versus this. You're not going to get that much power coming out of it, which is OK. And that's where if you have a backup like the Makita set where you have a circular saw reciprocating a saw a regular drill impact drill and a flashlight you could definitely use this all day long of using cutting doing outside work and charging everything off of this off of that during the daytime so definitely no problem there so in a grid down situation or if you were going to live off the land you could definitely go that route with using you know the 18 volt um, now, I don't know how long it would take to charge a full dead battery using the battery. It would probably, I think it would, it would take a little bit longer than the normal if you just plug into a regular outlet. But I think this would definitely do the job, especially if you're going to be doing this. You're going to probably be charging this during the daytime. So you're going to get the sunlight to charge your battery and kind of use the, that sunlight and the juice from the battery to charge that. Also, too, we had the iPad here. Like, no problem you know, charging a tablet or a cell phone. And if you really wanted to, we did not do the test, but I'm all the confident in the world, you can definitely charge a laptop with it. So um, we also, um, I did not do, but I did do a test is the small refrigerators. That would definitely work, you know, charging that. It would be one of those things where you would maybe just plug it in for about, you know, 10, 15 minutes while it gets it cool and then unplug it. So you're not really gonna kill your battery. But all in all, this little Harbor Freight setup with the battery and the inverter and everything else 
has worked out fantastically. So what we're gonna do right now is finish this video up, which, and we're gonna just go back, get this thing charging and kind of see if we're getting anything different on the solar regulator. Because when we started this video, it was at a it was at green, probably will be at a yellow, but the sun is starting to go down. So we're gonna try to wrap this up for you. All right, guys, we have everything hooked back up like the way we would into the battery. Now the solar charger regular is not getting any um, sunlight because when we go over to the panels, they're lit blue, but as you can see, the sun is really not getting them, so they're not charging. So we're getting some sunlight charge out of it, but not much. But one thing we can do a test is the light, and the light definitely works. So after using everything that we used, today in charging this battery still has a charge um how much don't know but like when we started this the voltage was high and we're not getting any charge right now because the sun's down but in the end i have all the confidence that right now i could probably open the garage door probably 10 more times and it would still work and i could probably charge finish charging that battery um that ipad mini you know, and having no problems in the battery probably would have some juice left afterwards. Maybe not enough for the battery charger, but I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna hundred percent sure, but using everything that I've used, like you would kind of use in a day, every day, um, this definitely, this kit will help you. And if you're kind of doing an off grid situation, you know, you're gonna want more batteries, you know, you have more solar panels, but if you're very, if you're living very minimalistic using the cordless circular saw to charge your batteries is definitely going to help you the lights from the battery you know you're going to want to think long term if you're going to be charging all this you need to make sure you have lights for the evening so yeah that's when you maybe would want to have second and third batteries set up so but if you're just using this for around the house just to kind of toy around with or if you're in a situation where you actually need to use this battery in a situation using it to open and close your garage door um, you know, maybe plugging a small refrigerator, like I said, would, that works. Also, you know, charging some tools and that, it, this will definitely get the job done. So all in all, doing this test, testing everything, feeling real confident. And I think for me, the next step would be to, um, you know, plug this in over a weekend and using opening and closing the garage door to see, will it work? Will it have any problems? And also not charging the batteries too at the same time. So. But we're gonna see all in all hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i really had a good time my wife gave me some great suggestions to try to help do as much test as we can to you know really put this battery put the inverter to the test so uh big thank you to my wife for giving me some of the ideas to kind of you know sh you know to make this happen um write those comments down below if you guys have used the harbor freight battery with an inverter like what were you able to do with just the one battery in a, in a kit i would love to hear what other people are using and doing out there so please if you guys could do that hit the thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this video enjoyed everything i did and if you haven't please hit that subscribe button so you guys can uh, catch more videos that we have coming on and you know be a part of the the family that we have so thank you guys so much and we'll catch you guys down the road